Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're beginning our weapon setup in our player controller, adding a container node and positioning a crowbar in our camera view. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. To add any weapon to our player controller, we need to think about how we want to structure our weapon system. Weapons will be a part of our player controller, so the structure should reside in our player controller scene. The weapons themselves will be connected to our player's view, always within our frame and moving with the player. Any weapon should then be a child of our camera system so that its transform is dependent on the camera transform. One way to do this is to create a new Node 3D parent container called the Weapon Rig as a child of our camera 3D node, and within this node, we'll add our weapons. For our first weapon, we're going to create a melee weapon, and what better weapon to base it on than the crowbar from Half-Life? We're not focused on modeling or texturing at the moment, so I'm using this free crowbar model from Sketchfab by Superior. The model is free to use with Creative Commons attribution, so you can use it in your project as long as you attribute it to the creator, and it's included in my Patreon project source files. I grabbed the 1K Texture GLV version, which you can drop right into your project files for Gato to import. Once imported, simply add it to the FPS controller scene as a child of our weapon rig. You should now have the crowbar within your FPS controller scene ready to be positioned. To position our crowbar properly for our player camera, we need to adjust its rotation and positioning. Our weapon rig node will be positioned at the origin of our camera 3D node, and any positioning for our weapons will be relative to that origin. So why not just move the weapon rig? Well, the position and rotation of our weapons won't always be the same. In fact, this entire system could be more complicated if you had a player model with rigging and weapons were attached to hands, etc. But for now, we're just focused on a basic weapon setup without a fully rigged character. And since weapons will have unique position and rotation needs, those adjustments should be contained within the unique weapon and not require constantly changing and adjusting the weapon rig container placement. The final design of the system will make use of custom resources and a weapon scene where we can load and adjust those unique placement settings via script. For now, we'll just manually adjust our position and rotation so we can get an idea. After adding the crowbar mesh, you'll get an instance of the crowbar in the controller scene. My position and rotation settings are as follows in my example. You can also use the camera preview to see how the crowbar looks through your camera. Feel free to use real game screenshots to get an idea of the placement as well. Now a more general rule is to keep the middle of the screen clear so the player has a good view of the action, but feel free to experiment according to your needs. Once you have your weapon placed how you want, run your scene and you should have your weapon within your camera frame and moving with your mouse. Now there are some issues that need to be addressed and ultimately this setup will get more complex in the next few episodes. First, we have a field of view issue. The weapon being within our camera gets distorted when we adjust our field of view and we're gonna be using that field of view when we make different effects or aim down sights. We'll fix this in the next episode along with our weapon disappearing into nearby meshes in front of the player, our depth issue. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.